it's in progress already. Okay, hi, Judita. Um, can you tell your name, please? Is it Judita? Um, the name that you use for your artwork is it Judita Rustica? Yes, Judita. Yes. No, Judita. I prefer <laughs> to keep it short. My surname. It's too Italian, and I like to be more uh, international in this. Okay. So, so I but down. Judita is how you call yourself. Only Judita. Yes. Okay. Judita. Very good. And you live in Berlin, you said, right? Yes, I live in mm. Berlin. I and you are live. originally from Italy? Yes. From I am Sicily. Sicily, is that correct? Huh? From Sicily, from the yes. south of Italy? From Messina, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. and I heard before that you uh, lived in Denmark as well and you're very influenced yes. by uh, Danish culture because you were there for yes. a few years and then you moved to Germany to Berlin and you have been there for the last uh, seven years or is yes. it okay seven and, years now yeah and your practice is uh, very much focusing on uh, figures, right? Even though it is not just about uh, portraits, but it does uh, begin in a way as an expression of portraits or portraiture. But yeah, and you said that um, that there is a connection with photography, even though your work is drawing, mostly made with graphite on paper and mostly black and white, correct? So yes. um, they are uh, not super small, the, not super large, but good size for drawings. And you have been focusing a lot on series, correct? On various drawings of the same series uh, to which you give titles. So yes. um, some of your series, there is one series that we will talk a little bit about today, which is called Drops of Madness. So could you give us an idea first, what, how, does, how do the titles come to you when you are working on your portraits, which are not really like, you know, like average portrait, but much more um, deep, perhaps they, they bring the psychology and the inner soul of uh, perhaps the, the people that you are uh, depicting. So tell me a little bit about Drops of Madness. What, how does that come to be? Well, the titles never come to me after studying or thinking about it too much. They come out of uh, inspiration, just uh, out of a dream or perhaps uh, just an intuition of uh, something that I see or that I just think about for a second, just an intuition, I will say. It's just an, a momentary inspiration. It's like a poem, something like that comes to you, you know, you don't search for it. Yeah. Um, and these drops of madness was so good because uh, they were drops, all of these people, they were many people, it was like a family picture. And uh, I thought, they were drops because they are. Mm -hmm. We are drops in the world, no? We are just a uh, few drops of a drops, of a, but not droppings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> drops of a river. No? We make the river by being drops. Right. <laughs> so, but can I so, ask yeah. you why madness? Why madness? madness. We are all well, mad. By then, <laughs> yeah, because by then I thought that all these people were putting out their own. Uh, madness uh, their own inner madness that we all have if people don't have madness if they will not put out that particular side of themselves if they just will the uniform they will always be uniform to the society to something to um to something you know to, uh, so you're saying to, that the madness madness oh, has something to do with uniformity right with the social yeah. constructions we, of humanity. coming out of that we coming out, out of that. that. Very good. Very good. So what you're saying is that the images as you are depicting them allows us to see the real humanity, right? The yes, real exactly. humanity is somewhere humanity. on the verge of madness. 
always yes. you know, on the yes. virtual man. It's very good. So it's almost a bit a bit Nietzschean, right? It almost has a little bit of Nietzsche into it. But uh, I want to go back to the practice and why drawings? Why you know not using like the some of the more classical or perhaps even teachings? Why not using oil? Why using graphite? And is it because your hand is on it or because you're more intuitive? So, well, okay, go I ahead. must say that I really like, I, I must say that I really like oil painting and I really was good at it when I tried it and I have been painting a lot. I mean, I really like it. It's really also representing me very well. But um, when I was traveling to Denmark, I felt that um, since my life was uh, developing into something to a person that was traveling, I will change off and flat. I will always, you know, be a guest in a city, being exploring a different culture, being always kind of a tourist because it's I more, know, it was more like a practical issue, real, right? Because it, it was, was a practical as well, a practical yeah. issue. I mean, first of all, I've always been very good at representing with the pencils since I was a kid, I started. So it was uh, taking back and all the love that I've always had. Okay. Um, I was a kid I was always uh, drawing, drawing, drawing. The drawing was very good at representing portraits as well. The, the expression of the people, like uh, so, in a very inner way. Yeah, mm -hmm. one thing that comes to mind is the travelogue, you know, like earlier artists that went to different countries and used uh, their pencil on a notebook to be able mm -hmm. to, you know, to kind of bring in to their memories what they are depicting so it's very immediate but also has an anthropological feeling to it it's almost like you are an ethnographer or an anthropologist rather than an artist you are depicting the madness of people all over right all yeah, over yeah, whatever exactly. you are the globe, the globe. <laughs> it is very common it's common in all kind of human beings so something nice. that we all can so, um, but you also, you mentioned to me that you are also inspired by uh, various other uh, forms of uh, understanding the human mind, right? So you yes. go back to films, you go back to books. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, so first I started with the personal personal development let's say I wanted to know more who I am first of all so I was uh, practicing uh, some spiritual uh, um, practices like meditation for example mm -hmm. uh, where there could come visualizations I was analyzing my own dreams uh, I first always thought that we have to know who we are because mm -hmm. that's very important also our uh, also our darkest side uh, because through those darkest sides, we will always uh, also find the light yes. uh, of ourselves and find the light through this uh, knowledge uh, yes. that is not in the dark anymore. Yes. Um, so this was my first uh, way to approach also art mm -hmm. um, and, and the people as well. You know, when, when I was doing portraits, I always um, like to to portray the expression, the inner expressions of the people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, the photography, it's very close to, to representing the reality because in photography, you can also catch very much, or in film, you can catch very much the essence mm -hmm. of the people when they move, um, when they behave. Uh, um, you can see the real essence as well. So it's figurative. Um, and I like figurative. Well, when you talk about the real essence, it, it comes uh, more the idea of psychology or the idea of philosophy, because uh, that is just an appearance. It's, uh, when we talk about what we are seeing, it's just a perception of people, not yeah, really the real exactly. essence. So that's what you capture is a perception. It's your own perception. perception. So it's how you actually translate what you see into your own dialogue exactly. with yourself, right? So it's my interpretation of your the reality. Your interpretation, very good. 
So we don't really know because uh, these works are your work. So these people only exist because you created them, right? I create them. Although they yes. were there, but you brought them to another level. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's in- Like yeah. making a picture and catching and putting it out a different uh, picture of the reality. Like if I was a camera, but I was really depicting a different- uh, Yeah. My own psychological uh, picture of the reality. But that is what all artists do and all writers do that too. I mean, you can never really enter a real person. Not even the real person can really know all about her or him. So it's really more a perception issue. And uh, going back to you know uh, the reality, for example, we could think about the social circumstances of people, right? Uh, when yes. you were depicting these people, were they uh, wealthy? Were they like average? Were they poor? Were, was that a connection with class, with uh, gender, with uh, you know race, uh, ethnicity, or not? Or they were just there? So tell me. Um, usually, uh, these uh, characters are universal. I would say because they go beyond the uh, barriers, so we can. Be- cultural or uh, uh, racial or for example the gen- even the gender identity I try to bypass let's say uh, mm-hmm. because uh, I want to concentrate on the essence of the mm-hmm. human mm-hmm. and therefore even the gender is mm-hmm. something that I'm exploring as a unique um, yeah. character not, yes. not, uh, not really as a man or a woman Very even my good. own self I'm Very trying good. to added it way um so yeah to find the essence of the of the root of the, i love um, that because yeah. that that whole idea of the universal for you is not that you don't know the distinction between exactly. gender and identity mm-hmm. issues yeah. that have to do with class or a race mm-hmm. you do know that but you're trying to yeah. transcend that by creating yeah. uh you know, going back to, let's say, to the gene, because we all come from so many different races and identities and ethnicities and even, of course, genders. So that puts us in a, a much more, let's say, a dynamic that is more universal in terms of the collective, that there is a sense of humanity that we are mm-hmm. dealing here, that even as humans, it's like a species that we uh, hardly understand, right? Exactly. But we don't exactly. know enough about ourselves. Right. And you are trying to bring us a wider, uh, let's say even a, a tabula rasa, right? Like a, mm-hmm. a clean slate, instead mm-hmm. of coming to think about uh, these images, these people, these beings as mm-hmm. uh, specific social uh, representations. That's not what you are interested in. You're interested exactly. in going back to the more psychological and the ethereal even, something that is more uh, related to the imagination in a higher level, right? Almost like a meditation about exactly. humanity. Right? that includes the dark side, mm-hmm. that doesn't make everything beautiful, but allows it to be in, on the shade. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that because that is the real anthropologist, you know? Uh-huh. And, and you are the artist anthropologist through your drawings, mm-hmm. but you are also, uh, in a way, the, the intuitive anthropologist artists, the intuitive, because you are going beyond the obvious. You're not just describing your uh, connection with images or with portraits or with people in a way that they are descriptive of social things that we already know and we're tired of knowing. So you're trying to bring, expand that view right? Allow us to see beyond the obvious, right? And I really enjoy that because it it makes us re-enter the dream state. Mm -hmm. And many of your works are based on the dream state, right? Uh, 
Yeah. So tell me something about uh, how did this idea start in your in your work? Was that something you always felt like you always saw humanity in this way? You always look at uh, you know your surroundings in a much higher, more universal level. Yes, I uh, always like to, since I was a kid, to observe people, uh, how they moved, what they did, uh, how, which expression they had in the face. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was also thinking, I was imagining what would be their situation in the house. So, um, I would like to always understand how people behave because their parents treated them this way. I mean, all of the psychological uh, um, uh, issues that were Mm -hmm. uh, that comes from, coming from, from generation but yeah uh, generational to generation yeah yes mm -hmm. okay. coming from traumas from um, traumas definitely generational trauma yeah and yes. so that is another very important uh, topic uh, which you are looking at also how a certain generational trauma affect the way we construct that exactly. group in Our the next world. generation, right? Exactly. So, in fact. so tell me a little bit about how that works in your in your drawings because they are mostly black and white. So I think the exactly. color so is just, they are, yeah. See, it's like if they are a universal portrait. I started with the idea that I wanted to mm -hmm. do uh, portraits that look like cold pictures. So in this way, mm -hmm. everybody could relate to them like if they were their own past. Um, so the, the idea was that I wanted to be drawing something that looked like cold pictures. So, and this was- so It uh, looks so like old pictures, but even unknown of unknown people, right? So it's almost yeah. like you are entering uh, yes. Some other lives, but you other don't life. know about them, and yes, yes. so that's how you look at the generational trauma. Is going back to uh, the connection with photography, and with this kind of photography that is found photography that you have it. You know, people don't even know where they come from, right? So it's really, uh, I think, perfect in terms of how you are perceiving your own practice and your own process and talk about this universal, you know, because it is about, uh, it's much more realistic to me than trying to uh, modulate, you know, create modules for people. They have to be that because they lived in this place or because they suffered wars or, so you are allowing uh, their, let's say, the representation of their shadows to be uh, somewhat uh, unknown to us, allowing us to perhaps not define their representation, not look at uh, the images and say, oh, this almost reminds me of the Holocaust victims, you know? Yeah. So it, uh, it might even, but you don't want it to be that clear. I want it to yeah. be something uh, exactly. Yeah. In fact, the, the interesting thing is that always people uh, from every kind of cultures or gender or work mm -hmm. or uh, social class can always somehow relate to the artworks personally. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thing. All over the world, uh, yeah. even from different religions and stuff, they can always relate personally, like if they were, because they can see their own story projected yeah. in mm -hmm. the world. Sure. Um, yes. And if so they if it's the Holocaust here, they can see that, uh, uh -huh. or their uh, family pictures or class pictures or brother, siblings, even if uh, they are just people that don't look like them, but it's uh, but an archetype. So. I, I have to say something. The way that you depict siblings, it's amazing because you really take almost like a genetic little part of the other figure and you put it in the other drawing. They yeah. seem all related it's almost like you have looked at their genetic trait you yes. know <laughs> through your intuition so it's very it's brilliant 
But I wanted to ask you, how does living in Denmark, because you told me that Denmark had a lot of influence in this, I mean, being in Denmark influenced this kind of work. So tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it was born there, uh, I think, uh, this series, this long series of drawings, so which is now actually called also Genetical Secret, which is a bit of the same uh, of drops of madness. Um, I think a bit I was inspired by the weather. The weather was always gray. Um, at some point, I even knew what it was with the depression. <laughs> Can I just People say were... one thing about the weather? Because I lived in Sweden, and the weather <laughs> is the the almost the only thing that people talk about to begin a conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Also, exactly, I see that. And also the people dress strangely, instead of bringing some color, they just dress black, white and gray. There is no other color that they were bringing in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was inspiring because I really uh, thought it was different for, for me and that I was from Sicily. So this was really something I was looking even double up on it. I was okay. looking even double times on it. Um, and I think this, uh, though, had a resonance with my inspiration from when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, actually, I started with black and white already. And I always had this soul in which I was expressing a bit uh, with mm. dark colors and um, with... Uh, deep colors. Um, I always liked horror film or thrillers and stuff. So mm -hmm. this was just the resonance with what I was uh, mm -hmm. usually interested in uh, the pitching. The pitching is an artist, uh, a picturing, how can I say, a painting. <laughs> so, um, so actually I, yeah. I started again this series. Uh, I just so started you with color. color. Okay, just, just let me uh, interrupt you just to talk a, a little bit about color because color comes also in your work. But you know, it, yeah, I, I was thinking about Schindler's List, uh, that film by Spielberg that mm -hmm. you have, it's all in black and white, but you have that main character, that little girl that appears in red to depict mm -hmm. that the story is really pointing out to her, right? So in your, a uh, lot of your work, the, the color, sometimes it's almost like uh, saying something, but it doesn't give us, it's like a, a sigil. I don't know if you know what a sigil is. It's like a, sigil. yeah, it's, it's almost like depicting something that should not be clear to us viewers. <laughs> So I want to know what is, why is that? Why do you actually do that? The secret, you not know, that I always put the secret, this nightmare, this, um, uh, see, this uh, secret to unlock in each artwork, even if it's not in the title, there is always a secret to unlock on these people. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I like that people will wonder what, going on really in that scene mm -hmm. by doing that they um, they exercise their own way of uh, looking inside of themselves i think mm -hmm. by by unlocking this mystery on the artwork so mm -hmm. it's like talking to their own uh, inner child or their own uh, inner presence and uh, really uh, having a dialogue um, with these parts of themselves that are still in darkness because they can project on the artwork. If people can project on the artwork their own selves and they ask these people who are they, okay. then they actually have a process of knowing who they are as well. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell me about Our Darkest Dream, the drawing from Drop of Madness that has a little eight in red or pinkish? You know that uh, image, the one of the boys, it's two boys that seem to be siblings. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's uh, the one brothers. Of the boys, uh, brothers, and then uh, one of them has a number eight on his yeah. shirt, and yeah. that is in color. So could you tell me, because that sometimes reminds me a little bit to the symbols in the Auschwitz, that you had the star, for example, to signify uh, yeah. it was a Jew, or if it was uh, uh, gypsy, it was a different color. So that is pretty interesting because it shows uh, a mark that was not 
um, secretive. It was obviously the opposite of that. It was to mm -hmm. expose people and to make them look uh, lesser, lesser than others, right? It was done on purpose for that, it's to make yes, them yes. become, uh, you know, like objects of uh, vexation rather than of pride, mm -hmm. right? And so I am thinking about that number eight because eight is a very interesting number. You know, it reminds us also the symbol of infinity. So that could have a completely different meaning to you. So I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that. About the details. So well, yeah, about first that, of, if that is something you thought. Yeah. Well, uh, of course, I did not do it for for the reason you just said about Auschwitz. That's uh, no, a I know. Story, of course, um, in now in my story, uh, every time I pick also a number, of course, it has a meaning for me. It has a meaning uh, in symbols. For example, the eight has the, the, mm -hmm. the meaning of infinitive, but also sometimes it's just a decorative case. I would call it a decorative case uh, because I want. I'm sorry. Can can you say it again? I didn't understand. It's like a decoration, a decorative ah, decoration. from the mm -hmm. from the drawing. Like uh, the drawing is uh, is black and white, mm -hmm. and then I just put uh, a case. This okay. case. Is okay. So it, it reminds me again for you, color had always a decorative element. That's why you are not so crazy about color in a way, but it more like focusing on the black and white, but the color comes uh, suddenly. So another mm -hmm. thing that I thought about it is that color is very meaningful in um, spiritual um, schools of thought in the beginning of the 20th century, you know, like the German expressionists, for example, they use Kandinsky use color uh, as a form of a connection with uh, first synesthesia with the idea of music, because he was uh, connecting music with his expression in painting, but also through color but also uh, after his readings on uh, ideas that went back to the theosophical school, the anthroposophy school, that were schools of the occult at that time. And he was very interested in color as almost like, uh, because colors in reality, according to the theos theosophical ideas, they go back to ethereal, uh, influence of the sun, okay, which are uh, changes in in the let's say the organisms of nature, okay. So everything that exists is not just created by uh, the elements of the earth, but it, they are also, according to the Theosophical school, they are also part of the cosmic spiritual in you know like inkling or influences that make that, uh, the colors appear in Kandinsky's work very, very strong, much stronger than in reality, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that had ever been something you looked into it. Yes, well, sometimes uh, the number is also having to do maybe with the age of the people that I imagine to, to draw like for with example what eight, with what seven. i'm sorry with age. age with the age could be the age of the people okay that, uh, okay so number mm -hmm. eight could be eight years old yeah and they look like about that age exactly interesting seven. yeah seven. so even though you're not dealing with specificity in terms of identity sometimes you know. play with that yeah I but play leave it as a sigil Right, so people play, can, yeah. That's I play good, also with gender fun. roles. I play also with roles in society, gender roles, uh, uh, roles in general. But I play; it's just a play because sure. it's not really serious. Sure. They are not really a gender uh, yeah. boy or girl. It's not a you representation. Know? Yeah, it's just like yeah. you are allowing intuition to to enter and play with that possibility, but it doesn't have to be age. It can be anything. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's a possibility. Sure. It's just a possibility. 
really I love that. that. I love mm -hmm. that. So there is a lot of play in your work, but so uh, another uh, thought that comes to mind is there is a lot of doubling, right? Like even the sibling, you know, the portraits of siblings, there is a doubling of it. It's almost like the uh, energy of one person kind of resonates on the whole group. Like there is mm -hmm. a kind yes. of a similar feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is that about? Why is that important? Because it's not just, you're not just thinking they are all part of the same family. You are much higher than that in your imagination. You are playing with other possibilities also, right? So yes. what is it? Uh, they could be just uh, all parts of the same person, for example. Okay. They could be all, all the uh -huh. same person, even those uh -huh. pictures where we have a lot of characters, uh, even the dolls, even the, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the adults, uh, yeah. even the big one, the fat. They, mm -hmm. they can just be parts of uh, the same person, parts that we have been uh, experiencing uh, in different occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it's very psychological from this point of view because we yeah. all have different parts inside of ourselves. Yeah. And so it's, uh, yeah. be, but it's uh, also it's also character. yeah it's also about humanity because we uh, it is known that everything that happens is a kind of an imitation. We imitate each other. We reflect each other. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, language and external yeah. reality is also yeah. part of ourselves. Yeah. What we, what yeah. we meet, we resonate. We we meet people because they resonate with yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So, so thinking a little bit about reality, how does let's say the work of Diane Arbus? Because when I was seeing your drawings, the first uh, artist that came to mind was Diane Arbus photography that also are very interesting because it's almost like she shows us a different world or a different way of seeing the everyday mm -hmm. world, okay? And that is, yours is much more bringing your, uh, in the possibilities of the unconscious or what that, the, the way that you perceive, but the way that people really are, humanity, exactly. universal yes. is. Yes. And, uh, but I just thought that there was a connection with the, you know, the kind of uniqueness of the, of the characters in your drawing, because in your drawings, that there is specific kind of uniquenesses in terms of their uh, physical appearance mm -hmm. that uh, goes back a little bit to, um, you know, like, uh, DNA uh, to specificity of DNA, especially yeah. you know certain aspects about people that have a very very um, let's say um, a close knit uh, human um, relationship in terms of ethnicity, for example, all their relatives are from the same country and from generations and generations. Sometimes they share very similar peculiarities of their identity. And that was one thing that came to mind when I saw these, you know, kind of things that are not uh, made more harmonious, but they are very unique and very specific to a specific trait of DNA, you know, that you see sometimes in same family members. Like if you look at aristocracy in the paintings of Jacques Louis David, you know, even before that, if you look at earlier neoclassical yes. artists painting aristocracy, aristocratic portraits, you see that the they're uh, they are very similar in their physical features, especially their facial features with their relatives it's almost like father son daughter everybody has the same kind of characteristic so it's it's something that is very uh, much about certain uh, higher classes or at least in in the in the case of the neoclassicist uh, paintings 
but I'm also thinking in terms of other research that has been done, you know, like um, even genetic research that goes back to people who had uh, only maybe the same kind of uh, the family, uh, many generations of the family in the same place, uh, mm -hmm. influenced by the same tendencies, the same ethnicities in that place, they kind of share similar traits in their appearance so that's interesting in a way you know uh, for example i also have this uh, art course called um, our family secret but we speak about this uh, tell me about that mm -hmm. family secret well there is this always secret <laughs> but, uh, and it's uh, in this case it's a uh, about our family secret but in the end of the day who knows if it's just uh, our secret is just our family secret, but our could also be our secret. So those all those characters could be same part of the same person. So but still having this secret that comes from other generations. Yeah, in a way. absolutely. Very good. So I, I think also some of your work that show the family secrets uh, series that you can see, there are a lot of dark uh issues there like for example sometimes children with weapons right children with uh -huh. weapons so it's mm -hmm. a little bit like there is a uh an inner uh it, it could even see that one that you are depicting an adult but you are transforming mm -hmm. that adult into a child so you are exactly. entering the shadow of that adult through the child's mm -hmm. playfulness Okay, mm -hmm. yet exactly. there is always an edge with darkness there, right? With perhaps yeah. secrets as being something negative, right? Not positive. Yeah, could also be uh, uh, cheating, you know, people could think about like huh? uh, some secret about cheating or some uh, interlaced cheating. Cheating, <laughs> cheating like yes, uh, yes, cheating. The secret could be something somebody did not say. Yeah, lack of communication. There is a little edge in sexual issues too, right? Mm -hmm. A little edge on sexual. Yes, yes there is, there is, support. and the relationship, like sexual, per, not perversion. Yeah, there is a little edge on that, but there is a, uh, you know, also a little sexual thing in in terms mm -hmm. of the relationship of children with uh, their own bodies right that mm -hmm. seem more yeah. an adult issue but it's put That's it on the children and it which creates uh, a darker edge because it's resonating mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. the secrets right. I mean, the family right. secrets or like whatever that. so it's but that's i think is because uh, i put a lot on the portrait and the portrait, not only, but also many different portraits create the relation between individuals. And when there is the relationships, mm -hmm. relationship, then of course they burn all of the issues that people have with each other and with themselves as well. Because yeah. I mean, if you don't have a, a good relation with yourself, you cannot have a good relation with others. So yeah. in the end of the day, yeah. this is uh, translated. Beautiful. So what you are saying is that although there is darkness or although we deal with shadows, shadow sides of ourselves, we are constantly trying to overcome that by becoming more and more connected with others, right? Yeah. Your ability yeah. to become part of the social group uh, allows us to overcome and, that. Yes. And also by getting more relation with our own self and by observing our shadow, accepting, observing, loving our shadows. Exactly. And we can yeah. actually um, heal the barriers between relations with others. Yeah. So it's, it's accepting our shadows, but it's also, um, you said loving, loving our shadows. So yeah. when I think about loving our shadows, the problem with that is it's not recognizing uh, the, the shadow as something that could be uh, so, you know, like could be dark, could, could create 
a problem with other, other people. But in fact, it is thinking more in terms of the shadow as something of infancy, of human infancy. It's like not thinking just children, but just stating in a way that humans are in their infancy, that we are still children. We, even old people, yeah. we humans are yeah, still yeah, in a yeah, state of that. infancy. Yeah. yeah, that we have a lot to go through to be able to yes. be better at mm -hmm. we, we are. Exactly, and this is what I want to say also, that in fact, there are no ages on the characters because uh, even though they look kids, but we all have the issues of the kids, even when we are adults, who says that we do not have them. That's so that's heavy. what, uh, yeah. these characters in the end are universal, even in the age. Yeah. Itself, yes. Is, um, and I think he, yeah. having the, the child as an adult is a great thing, you know, still having mm -hmm. that side of yours in as a as an adult, you know, that child side is a wonderful thing about humanity. And we should allow mm -hmm. that because it allows playfulness. It allows also mm -hmm. forgiveness, right? Forgiveness to others and to things that had yeah. happened. So it's beautiful. That message, I think, is so beautiful. And when most people see your work, they don't have maybe the depth to grasp that at first because of the way that some of the images appear to us immediately and the fact that they have been utilized in film and in writing as a form of actually um, representing uh, the marginalized image of humanity rather than an aspect of humanity that can that that we all have right that we all share in various levels does that make sense yeah yes. do you do you agree with that okay so is there a final thought that you could add to us about your work what are you intending to do next is it continuing with the same ideas well i think as our self-exploration does never end in this life because there is always the process of uh, knowing who we are there is never an end point of that you know? <clears throat> as we always change um i think uh, Actually, my next projects are just becoming a little lighter, let's say. I would say <laughs> I am exploring more the, the, the world of the angels. Somehow I want to explore a little wow. bit more. But still, they are this, uh, starting from these characters. So and are they going to be black and white also? This yeah, work? But there will have uh, some colors added, like, yeah. uh, especially as I told you, I was exploring the, the gold now. Yeah, I wow. think I explored that for a little longer. Yeah. Oh, that goes back to the Gothic, Gothic art, right? And they had a lot of angels also. So, yes, the world of the angels, and, but it's all, also more uh, a, an aspect of mediunic uh, perception or. Is it something then, that goes back to history or what? No, no, they, I think they will just be characters. These characters will be just messengers, you know, like mm -hmm. these characters that are coming out also already from these um, drawings, from this series. Uh, wow. They will just become messengers of a new uh, message to the world, like a new message that Beautiful. is um, positive and yeah, they will just. Uh, give this new reassuring message uh, of being uh, also close to us because they are all i mean also these ones are already close to us and in a way they are of course, us. Of course they are close to us um, but um so tell me one thing what would be a message uh perhaps for the future that these angels are bringing in your mind uh, i am must working on it <laughs> because it's, it's very, very new thing. but they are obviously giving uh, helping us humans to to understand ourselves better to yeah, yes uh, yes yes our potential they are always mm -hmm. continuing this method like the ones of this ones so maybe with a bit more reassuring uh, side but uh, they will mm -hmm. be still the same always mm -hmm. so that will bring us the knowledge uh, of, uh, of who we are that's, okay. that's the thing in the end. And the so, spirituality. 
Yes. Because we could also learn this through um, psychological uh, uh, knowledge, but also mm -hmm. spiritual knowledge. So spiritual knowledge. Be... Yeah, sure. Yes. So uh, do you see the, that um, this spirituality as a language that is expanding now, that is becoming more and more open to everyone in a, you know, outside of religion, you know, something that is more yeah. connected to our own perceptions of ourselves and uh, of our awareness of, you know, of, uh, let's say the um, ephemeral world, right? Around mm -hmm. us. Uh, yes. Yeah. I hope so because uh, usually I think pos I like being positive and I hope that this is going to happen soon, even though we don't see it yet. But mm -hmm. uh, I think so, yes. Okay. There, there is the yeah. knowledge that is coming on. Yeah, because your work, your work is not really about uh, this, uh, a specific kind of representation is not your work is very contemporary. There is a um, an aspect of it that that feels very contemporary. So it's not about uh, it. It's not a caricature. It's not allegorical. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I would say that even if you are depicting angels in your work as messengers, as it enters that story of humanity from your vision in which there is a, uh, you know, that allows imagination to create reality in a way. So it, it kinds of uh, shifts that idea that the world has to be real, has to be object oriented, has to be pragmatic. It's more like, no, in your universe, no, the world is much more than that. The world has, you know, phenomena constantly. All the time there's something happening that we don't understand, okay? And mm -hmm. we can see that through nature. And, but also even in higher levels, and in a way that's what you allow yourself to tap on as you are creating your work, right? You're tapping on this world. There is another world. Yeah, there are other worlds. But there are other worlds and other universes as well. So wonderful. Universe. Yeah, maybe the next series after the angels will be other universes. Mm -hmm. no? yes. That could be the. There are always yeah. already work. Uh, yeah. There are those black doors, there are other universes to enter. Uh, somehow For sure. there are many artists that have this uh, black door, somehow this black mm -hmm. entrance, usually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great uh, i see that like portals right but yeah, uh, and also in connection to the dream but i i don't see like for example animals so that's another universe right animals yeah, the animal mm -hmm. universe you know even though well, they are within our connect. universe but they are different than well, we connect this one because this is everything but it's just the sure. code that i am using is humans right in this case uh, mm -hmm. it's humans so the humans can identify more mm -hmm. personally yeah mm -hmm. and and i can see that connection also with film in it you know the the application mm -hmm. of this universality of humanity that mm -hmm. can even reach science fiction or can reach comp just complete imagination right the dreams of people yes. and who we decide that we are right and how mm -hmm. do we decide that in what form of awareness we are to decide that right mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, very good. So I'm, I'm happy with all of it. Do you have a, a final statement? Final sentence? Okay. Well, the final statement is that uh, <laughs> I hope people will always uh, be in touch with who they are really and they can find also this uh, positive and spiritual part of themselves uh, more and more from now on. Yes, I, I agree. 
completely. And I love that you are saying that very openly. And also that you are saying that creativity is a form of allowing that, right? Using the exactly. art process is a way of allowing that. One of the portals. One of the portals. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much, Judith. You. I, you know that I love your work and I wish you lots of success. And uh, let's keep in touch and keep talking about it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, if you have any any other things to ask, uh, Cedra, just let me know, of course, by mail and uh, update me about this. Okay. Yeah, we will. But this is for everybody to see. We will continue talking, you and I, right? Outside of here. Okay. But still, yes. nice, good. I think people are going to love to get to know you better. Thank yes, you. Thank you very much also, because maybe I think you will give a real key of reading that nobody has given really so deeply until now, oh. <laughs> because uh, we didn't ever have such a deep talk with people uh, about yeah. uh, It's too bad. It's too bad, because I think you have to be an artist to, to understand other artists. Sometimes it's difficult uh, for people uh, who come from uh, just uh, media but if you are a critic an art critic you usually know a little more about the art process That's so um but i am so glad to have found you even though you are in berlin it's not so far and your work is universal it's beautiful it's amazing and um you know i really thank you for what you're doing just keep on you you are doing something really innovative and uh, inspiring for a lot of people. Okay. Thank you very much, Denise. Stay okay. well and Perfect. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. Talk soon. Bye bye. See you soon.